Hello everyone, this is Indrajit Ganguly and welcome to your history class. Dear students, today I am going to teach you the last topic from the fourth chapter of history that is learning and culture of the Islamic world. In these topics, I will discuss with you development of science and medicine in the Islamic world, development of Islamic literature and also discuss with you about the development of Islamic architecture. Okay, so my first topic that is development of science and medicine. Remember students, this topic that is the last topic learning and culture is very important for objective type question and three mark question. So please go through this topic very carefully and read this topic thoroughly. Okay, the Arabic Khalifa translated Greek philosophy, medicine and mathematics. Because whatever development we generally saw in the field of philosophy, mathematics and medicines that generally came from the Greeks. Okay, because Greeks, the Greek civilization developed the European civilization or we can say that the Greek civilization was an ancient civilization, it was a very prosperous civilization. Okay, so whatever development we saw in the field of philosophy, econo uh, philosophy, mathematics and science in the European region that was for the Greeks, uh, that was for the Greek, Greek civilization. So the Arabic Khalifa, the Muslim Khalifa, they decided to translate the works on these topics. Okay, the works of Aristotle, the works of Aristotle is basically about politics and economics. Okay, the elements of Euclid, it is about mathematics and geometry. Ptolemy's Almages, it's about science, were brought to the attention of Arabic reading scholars. So these types of books, these types of reading were also came into the attention of the Arabic Khalifa and the Arabic scholars and they usually translated these things, right? Next, you will be surprised to know that Indian works on astronomy, mathematics, medicine were also translated. I hope you know that the famous mathematician called Aryabhatta, okay, astronomer Baraha Mihir, okay, um, uh, scientists called Charaka and Shushruta, all belong from India. So, the Arabic scholar, basically the Muslim scholar, they also gave, uh, they also gave their attention on this translation of the Indian works, basically on astronomy, mathematics and medicines. Next, there is an Islamic philosopher and doctor named Ibn Sina. It is very important for objective type questions, please uh, very careful. That is Ibn Sina, he wrote a book and the name of the book was al Kanun Fil Tib. I am repeating once again, al Kanun Fil Tib. You have to write the name of this book in the same way, okay? And you will be surprised to know that in this book, Ibn Sina mentioned about 760 drugs. Can you imagine 760 drugs? Which means he gave, uh, he gave about, he gave discussion about many of the diseases and how these diseases will be cured by the different types of drugs. drugs. All, the, all these types of things are mentioned in his book. So it is very important about the development of Islamic uh, science and medicines. Remember students, Ibn Sina also mentioned that the climate and environment sometimes influenced our health. So these kinds of arguments, these kinds of theory are also presented in this famous book, al Kanun Fil Tip. Okay. Okay. My next, uh, next discussion is about Islamic literature. Remember students, Rudaki was considered the father of new Persian poetry. His name was Rudaki. He is a famous poet. He introduced short lyrical poem called Ghazal and quatrain called Rubai. Now the question is, uh, what is quatrain? Quatrain is of the four line stanza poem only four poems are four line stanzas are there in the poem okay and it is known as rubai remember students rubai rich its peak in the hands of umar khayyam i am repeating once again rubai rich its peak in the hands of umar khayyam so who, who is the father of new persian poetry his name was rudaki he introduced short lyrical poem called ghazal and quatrain that is rubai and rubai rich is pick in the hands of Umar Khayyam. Uh, Umar Khayyam was the famous astronomer and mathematician of the Islamic world. Okay, all these things are important for objective type questions. Okay, 
there is another book called shahnama it was written by firdausi okay he it was considered as a masterpiece of islamic literature let me tell you a very short story about shahnama uh, firdausi came to india during the uh, came to india with sultan mahmud of ghazni ghazni is present day situated in afghanistan sultan mahmud of ghazni uh, attacked india for 17 times and he plundered all the temples of india sultan mahmud destroyed the famous uh, shiva temple of gujarat which is named as somnath temple and he took all the immense uh, gold jewelry gold jewelry diamonds silver everything from india and he plundered he raided india for 17 times firdausi came in india with ghazni sultan mahmud and he wrote a book that is known as shahnama there is another masterpiece it is considered as travelog and this book is known as al rihala al rihala and that book is written by ibn batuta remember students ibn batuta came to india during the time of sultan mohammed bin tughlaq in class 12 there is a detailed discussion about ibn batuta okay so i am not giving you any kind of story about ibn batuta next there is another book it's called kalila wa dimna kalila wa dimna it is a collection of animal fables collection of animal fables and it was some believe some people believe that it was the translation of panchatantra i hope you remember that panchatantra is a famous animal fables was written by vishnu gupta in india so they translated the animal fables and they gave the name was kalila wa dimna okay there are many popular stories are also there this is the name of the popular stories i hope you are familiar with many of this first one that is sindabad the sailor next one alif laila third one the thousand and one nights and next one is aladdin so these are popular stories and this was the development of islamic literature okay okay my last discussion is about the islamic architecture remember students by the 10th century an islamic world had emerged which was easily recognized by travelers religious buildings were the greatest external symbol of islamic world i hope you understand that what is the meaning of religious buildings it can be mosque shrine tombs and many more and arches domes minarets open courtyards it expressed the spiritual and practical needs of muslims what are they it is arches arches minarets okay uh, open courtyards it expressed the spiritual and practice of the muslims uh, i hope please uh, go through uh, internet and please search the arches minarets and open courtyards and you will understand the design of islamic architecture okay and it will uh, it will help you to enhance your general knowledge about islamic architecture because when you saw the islamic architecture basically the old architecture suppose you visited qutub minar or visited you visited taj mahal you can find the the finest design of islamic architecture on that place okay next next one that next one that is another important the component of the islamic architecture that was deserted palaces deserted palaces generally developed in the islamic architecture there is example two example in your book the umayyads believe uh, built desert, deserted palaces in the oasis such as khirbat al mafzar it is situated in palestine recently palestine and next one was kusha uh, kushayar amra and it is situated in jordan which served as luxurious residences and retreats for hunting and pleasures the palaces modeled on roman and sasanian architecture obviously the islamic architecture was influenced by the roman and sasanian architecture sasanian architecture means the architecture was developed in the iranian uh, continent iranian region sorry were lavishly decorated with sculpture mosaic paintings of people okay next that is a part of the islamic architecture that is art forms remember students portrait of living beings was completely rejected in the islamic architecture okay so in the religious art of islam it promoted two types of art forms 
first one is calligraphy i hope you know that what is calligraphy it is the art of beautiful handwriting and next one is arabesque arabesque is geometric and vegetal designs okay so this is up this is a, this is about the islamic architecture okay this is it for chapter 4 next day i will provide you question answers and activity thank you and have a nice day